In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm gonna show off this beautiful female tick by letting it walk on my skin again. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how to deal with ticks and talk to you about the awesome biology of these interesting arachnids. So we just came up here to a family cabin that we're staying in up in the mountains. It's a beautiful area. There's lots of wildlife. There's dense grass and plants and trees and everything all around us. So about three or four hours after I got here, I started feeling some itching on my leg. And about right in here, about three or four hours after we got here, and I found that there was a tick crawling on my skin right here. And that tick is right here in this bag. So the place the tick must have come from is this area right in here. I literally only walked in this area two or three times very quickly just unloading some things out of the car. And this guy came off of one of these plants um, and climbed up my pants and into that part of my leg. So in order to prevent ticks from actually getting onto you, you wanna avoid areas like this. You don't wanna go into grassy areas as much as you possibly can, especially up here in a mountainous area where I'm at right now. Other things you can do to prevent ticks from getting onto you is using bug sprays with chemicals like Picardin or DEET. Those work great for repelling them. You can also get clothing that has permethrin in it that will prevent ticks from getting onto you. If you have had to travel in an area like this, it's important to take off your clothes and check your body to make sure you don't have any on you after you're done with whatever activity you are doing. The earlier you can catch them, the better because they're going to need some time to gorge themselves with your blood. So if a tick does get onto you, there's a very specific way that you need to remove it. I don't really want to put the tick back on me because it could spread an infection to me. I'm just gonna show you with one of my hairs. So the key thing you want to do with the tick, so we'll say that this uh, beautiful looking hair here is the tick. Uh, the key thing you want to do is you want to get as close to the skin as possible. And you want to pull with even pressure. You don't want to jerk or twist. You just want to pull firmly and then it will pull off. A couple things that you do not want to do with a tick is you do not want to put petroleum jelly on it or put heat like a match type of thing on it or nail polish. Those are just kind of myths that folks have come up with. That will kind of get them out, but that's not the best way to do it because that can irritate the tick and then it will excrete more of its fluids which could increase the chances of you getting an infection. So the fastest, best way to do it is going with those tweezers, get right up against the skin as close as you can so that you're not ripping the tick in half and pull it out. All right, well now we get to have some fun. I'm gonna pull the tick out of this bag and I'll put him in my hand, try to handle him and keep him from going too crazy. I have not put him on my skin since I uh, had him on my leg. So here he is, he's running around on my finger. Let's see if we can get him to go on this hand, have a little more control. Okay, so there's some key parts to his body. I'm gonna try and see if I can get him to slow down here, grab one of his feet. There we go. Got a hold of him there, so he'll hold still for us, hopefully. So as you can see, now that I've got him pinned down here, he's got eight legs. He is an arachnid. He has an abdomen there in the back. He's got his head, and then in between the two, there's kind of a shoulder pad type thing, like a, some, like a shield, which is called the scutum. And that is very present and uh, able to be seen in females. Some key mouth parts, they have chelicerae, which are like cutting blades. So they'll go in with these blades and they'll cut into your skin so that they can insert uh, a feeding tube. And that feeding tube has barbs, which will hold it in. They will also secrete um, some saliva, like cement stuff that will cement them in. So that kind of locks them in place. And they've also got some palps there on their mouth, which are detecting um, whether this is a good food source or not. And so he might be trying to figure that out right now. I'm hoping he's disturbed and he's not trying to insert himself into me. You can see right there he's kind of lifting his legs up. That's a common behavior they have when they are on a plant is uh, trying to detect CO2. They can detect CO2 at those front legs. So that's them kind of looking to see if they can find a host. If this thing gorged itself, it'd probably be about the size of a raisin. I mean, right now it's very, very small, but um, they can gorge themselves and get quite large. 
that white shield looking thing right there that is the scutum so they're pretty awesome so if this guy ends up getting uh, stuck in your skin you're gonna want to try and grab down in here as much as you can you want to get as close to that head as you can or at the least right there on the scutum you see right there that plate you want to grab right in there and then you're just gonna again pull very firmly uh, no jerking no twitching or twisting just firmly pull them off so ticks can have up to a three-year life cycle as they go through their different stages the different stages that they have are eggs larvae nymphs and then adults so the nymphs and the larvae are very similar to the adults they're going to be feeding on blood of different animals so what ticks will normally do to feed is they will exhibit a behavior that is called questing which just sounds like a lot of fun and what they'll do is they'll climb to the top of a leaf or a twig or on a branch of a tree and they will wait there until a suitable host comes by they do have eyes they're very small they can detect shadows and some light once they kind of detect some movement and they've detect CO2, which they can kind of tell from their front legs, they'll kind of stick those front legs out, you know, almost like a touchdown type shape. And they're kind of moving them around, feeling to try and figure out where that CO2 is coming from so they can find that host and then cling on to them and uh, hop off and go onto their body. Once they get onto the body of their host, they're going to climb around and they'll use the palps, which are parts of their mouth, which they can kind of sense different things, and they'll find a nice place where they want to insert themselves into their host. They are going to cut into the host with chelicerae, which are these cutting parts, and they also will um, secrete some anesthetic type chemicals that will kind of make it so your skin is not going to feel that pain as it cuts into you, because you can imagine that might be quite painful to have these teeth just cutting into you. So they're a lot like mosquitoes in that sense. They have a tube-like mouth part that will insert into your bloodstream and that is cemented into place with some chemicals. And then they'll start putting in proteins which will make it so that your body does not coagulate and they can kind of control the body and the defenses of the body of whatever animal they're feeding on so they can get as much blood as they can. They'll gorge themselves, um, which can take quite a while, and they can get gorged to huge amounts. Um, these things are just disgusting when you see a gorged one. You just think of all the blood that's in there. But they need that in order to produce eggs or in order for them to digest so they can molt and move on to the next stage in their life. So for the juveniles, they will gorge themselves as much as they can and then they drop off, go find a nice dark, humid place um, where they can kind of hide from predators and go through the next process of their life. So the species I've got here is most likely a Rocky Mountain wood tick, because that's a common species that's out in this area. But if you do find one of these, I would not suggest actually handling it like I am. I'm only doing this to educate you guys so you guys can learn more about insects, arachnids, and other awesome creatures. You can preserve these in alcohol, which is what I'm probably gonna do with this one, so I can show it to people and teach them more about these interesting creatures, which deserve our respect and we also need to try and avoid because of the diseases they could spread. If you do end up getting bitten by one of these and it has been inserted in you, um, you're going to want to watch yourself for fever-like symptoms. You want to watch the actual place where you were bitten to see if rashes start to occur. If you start having symptoms like that, then you're probably going to want to go see a doctor. And if you go to the CDC website and search for tick bites, there's all sorts of information about that. That's the Center for Disease Control, and they've got lots of information about ticks. Also, I wanna give a very special thanks to Brian Rich, my friend from Texas A&M University, who has worked with ticks. He helped uh, confirm a lot of the information I was asking about ticks. Sorry I didn't get to say everything you told me, Brian, but I do appreciate what you told me. If you want to show him thanks, check the description of the video or go to this link here. There is a new tick app that they are working on. Right now at this point it's just a website, but it's going to hopefully become an app eventually. But go check that out if you want to learn more about ticks, especially in the Texas area. So I'd like to know from you guys if you guys have ever been bitten by a tick before. This was actually one of my first encounters that I've had with a tick. Um, and I was only out there for a few minutes. All the rest of the people here didn't get this opportunity. I know it probably has seen more of a curse than a blessing, but to me, I thought this was cool to see one and teach you guys more about ticks and show off this interesting creature. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by liking and subscribing. 
and share this video, add it to your playlist. That always helps too. Thanks for watching and stay tuned next time where big adventures start small.